Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Euro Cooking Canuck. On today's segment of Memories of Malta, I'm going to be making what, in my opinion, is the number one recipe in Malta. It's the national dish. What I'm making today is called Stufat Telfenic, and what that is, is rabbit stew. Now, before any of you who are squeamish click this video off, hear me out. Number one, rabbit is really, really lean. Number two, it's extremely healthy and good for you and high in protein. And number three, no, it doesn't taste like uh, chicken. <laughs> um, it tastes like rabbit, but it's not a gamey, gamey meat. Um, you may actually fool some people. If you didn't tell them it was rabbit, they may just go ahead and assume it is chicken. So guys, stay with me and I'll be right back and show you what we're gonna need to make Stufat Telfenic. Okay gang, I'm back to show you what we're gonna need to make Stufat Telfenic, which is our rabbit stew. So obviously you're gonna need a rabbit. Now pick a young rabbit and make sure your butcher includes the liver, the kidneys, and the heart because typically the sauce will be served atop a spaghetti as a starter and you might be lucky enough to get one of those little pieces in the sauce. Now my rabbit also came with his little head. Yeah. Um, the Maltese are adamant about including the head of the rabbit in the stew because they say it adds flavor and I believe them. Um, I personally, I just don't like my food looking back at me. So guys, what you can do is once the, the head has done its job, you can discard it. You don't have to eat it or you can give it to somebody who does enjoy it. Now the rabbit is not cut up, so I'm going to show you guys how to cut up and prepare your fennec as well. As far as vegetables go, I have some potatoes and carrots and a cooking onion. And as far as our spices go, you're going to need quite a few bay leaves. I have about eight large bay leaves here. I also have some ground cloves, ground allspice, and curry powder. Now there is people who do sell rabbit seasoning, and if you can get your hands on some, go ahead, you can use that as well. Um, this is a tomato-based sauce, so obviously I have a jar of strained tomatoes, which is passata, or you can go ahead and use um, a can of stewing tomatoes and stew them down. And one of the most important uh, elements of this stew is a bottle of red wine. Now guys, when you're cooking with wine, please do yourself a favor and pick a wine that's really good that you enjoy and you would drink. You don't want to put a crappy wine in something you're going to eat. Also, um, pick a local wine. Support your local vineyards. This happens to be from an area called Point Pelee in Ontario. It's the most southern tip of Canada on the shores of Lake Erie, and it enjoys the same kind of climate as Northern California. So it's a quite a good wine. So this happens to be a Merlot, but you can go ahead and use your favorite red wine, anything you would drink. So guys, this is everything that we're going to need to put together our stew fat. And what I'm going to do is I'll be back next to show you how to prepare your rabbit. Um, there's just two more things you're going to need is some seasoned flour with salt and pepper and um, a little bit of cooking oil. And I'll show you what we do next. All right, guys, thanks for sticking in with me. Okay, guys, I'm back with my rabbit. And what I've gone ahead and done already is I've taken the head off and taken the giblets out. I mean, it's a cooking show. I don't want it to be too macabre. Um, so for me, I find it easier if I flip him um, belly side down and the, you can see his spine and there's a natural, everything is kind of naturally there. So um, now rabbit is bony, so you will have to cut through those bones. If you're using a sharp knife, you should be able to do that effortlessly. And now you can see you have mirrored images. So then it's simply a matter of fact of Taking the leg, so there's one leg off, and then you do the same with the other leg, and then you would cut the flank into two pieces, and then finally the front arms. So guys, this isn't a lesson in butchery, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to cut up your rabbit, and then I'll show you what I do with him next. Alright guys, my rabbit has all been cut up. Um, you just need a really sharp knife and just follow its natural lines. So as you can see, I have the two back legs, I have the two front legs, I have the flank here, and that's it. And I'll show you what we do next, and that's just I'm going to wash and pat dry the rabbit really well, and, um, and then we're going to dredge it in some flour, and I'll see you when we're back on the stove. Hey guys, I'm back to show you how to... Um, coat your, your rabbit in flour. Now, 
I'm only going to show you one or two because we all know how to do this. What I've gone ahead and done is put some salt, pepper, and actually some garlic powder into my flour to season it. I've washed and patted dry my rabbit pieces and simply it's a matter keep one hand for wet and one hand for dry. And just give your uh, rabbit pieces a nice coating of flour. And then you're gonna shake off the excess. You don't want it to be like Kentucky Fried Chicken. It's just to give it a nice um, <clears throat> brown coating. So that's it. And I'm gonna set him aside over here and I'm gonna continue with the rest of the pieces and then I'll be back and show you what we do next. All right guys, thanks for watching. Hey guys, okay, I'm back and as you can see, my um, rabbit pieces are coated in the flour lightly. And over here, I have the giblet pieces that I've cut up as well. And yes, there's the head. <laughs> Actually, it's not so bad once it's coated in the flour. Okay guys, so what I have on the stove right now is uh, my pot with some canola oil that's getting hot and these guys are gonna go in for a bath in batches and I'll show you what that looks like in just a sec. Hey guys, welcome to the stove top. So in my pot here, I have a fennec, a medium high heat, and I'm getting them just nicely brown. You want like a nice brown color. And I'm doing this in batches because I don't want to overcrowd my pan. So guys, continue browning off your rabbit pieces. Set them aside on a, a little plate like this until they're all browned off. And then I'll join you back and show you what's next. Hey guys, okay, so everything's browned off. Um, a lovely brown color on my fennec and lastly but not least we have our uh, poor fennec head in here and he is the last um, piece to be browned off there he is okay see you in a bit okay guys I'm back um, on the stove top and what I'm doing right now is I'm just gently sauteing my onions and then I added the garlic and it smells really good well you guys know what onion and garlic smells like so at this point um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is add our veggies because they cook they take a little longer to cook so <clears throat> potatoes go in And these potatoes were huge, guys, so I only used two of them. I thought I was going to use three, but I used two. But it's up to you. And our carotti, carrots. Right. So I'm just going to give this a little saute and stir. Now, talking about the vegetables, guys... <laughs> If you watched my last video, um, I mentioned <laughs> that there's something I always forget, and that's peas. And it's a really important element of this dish. And please don't forget them. I've already taken mine out. Um, and again, to your taste, and you know me, guys, from watching my videos, I love peas. And I keep forgetting them, but I always remember in the end. Um, so add peas closer to the end of cooking because as you know peas don't take long to cook so i'm just gonna let this guy go for just a bit and then i'll show you what i do next i'm gonna start adding all the the, the flavorings the passata and, and you guys will see all right be right back okay guys i'm back and as you can see i added my passata and i've added all the spices i did salt and pepper the carrots and potato while they were sauteing a bit um, all the spices, as I said, are in there, the passata, and now what I'm going to do is go ahead and add the entire contents of my bottle of wine. I know it seems like a lot, but you're not going to get drunk. Well, you know what? I'm going to save some 
and see um, if I need to add more because it looks pretty good as it is. Right, and also there's another thing, and I did forget, um, Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire sauce or however you want to call it. I put a few um, glugs of that in there as well. And I'm just going to let this go just for a bit, and then I'm going to add my rabbit and let this simmer. Okay, guys, and I'll show you what it looks like when um, we get to that point. Guys, there's one thing um, also you need to add at this point, and that's your bay leaves. So go ahead and add them. And you know what? I um, and, and I cook by taste and smell and look, and I think this um, can stand for a little bit of conserva, which is tomato paste, because that jar of passata just wasn't enough, and I didn't have another jar. So I put some tomato paste in there, and um, <clears throat> I'm going to add the fennec in just a minute, and then I'll be back and show you what's next. Hey guys, I'm back real quick to touch base. You know, there's probably as many versions of this recipe than there are cooks in Malta. They say this recipe dates back to the time of the Knights of Malta. So what I'm showing you guys tonight are the basic essentials, the things you're going to need to make this recipe taste, smell, feel, and be authentic. Now that's not to say you can't add a little bit more of something or extract a little bit more of something. Make it your own. As I sit in my kitchen and smell the aromas, it really reminds me of my nanu when he used to invite us over for fricata. So guys, who knows, maybe your version of this will be passed down to other people. Hey guys, we're back and my um, stufat, the stew, is smelling so amazing and it simmered nicely now and what I'm going to go ahead and do is add our fennec and all of even the giblets, everything, everything's going in here. And then what I'm going to do now, um, once all the fennec is added, is put this on a nice gentle simmer and let it thicken up because guys we all know a stew is thick push those boys down the head is in there yes it is you saw it go in all right so oh and any juices on your plate oh yeah they go back in there too that's flavor okay guys so now our stew is basically done and all we have to do is let it simmer and at the end or near the end is at our peas and we'll be done and I will show you guys when it's all finished thanks a lot for watching Oops. hey guys so I've simmered my stew and it's thickening up and I've added my peas didn't forget and at this point I'm going to um, love you and leave you I'm going to um, really simmer this on a low and put a lid on it and then turn it off because this stew is actually better the next day and I have some friends who are coming over and this is going to be our dinner for tomorrow night so I know I normally um, show you guys a plated but you know what through the magic of video you will see it plated shortly but just not in my real time you will see it when it's done tomorrow so guys um at this point like i said ciao for now thanks for watching and i'll see you guys tomorrow my time but in just like a few seconds for you all right ciao guys hey guys okay welcome back it's the next day and <laughs> Um, here I have my spaghetti um, with the rabbit sauce as our starter. And all that's left to do is to put on a little bit of Parmesan because Parmesan is good. Alright, so guys, I'm really going to enjoy this 
and then I'll be back to show you the full fennec meal, fencata, and um, hopefully you guys will try this recipe. It's really good for you guys, and I, I'm so glad that you guys watched. Hey guys, so I'm back with um, my fennec. Um, as you can see, I have a nice leg and a couple of pieces of flank and our stew, which is so great. Um, the potatoes, the carrots, the peas, and if you're lucky enough, you may get some of the giblets in there. So guys, this is it. Um, I hope you try this dish. It's really, really tasty and it's really, really good for you. And I'll see you next time on Memories of Malta. Ciao. So you're probably wondering, hey, what happened about the head? Well, let me tell you, the head was delicious. The cheeks were very sweet and the brain tasted like liver. We really enjoyed it and I will be eating it in the future. Thanks guys again for watching. Please hit like, please subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Memories of Malta. Ciao.